Welcome to the Gaming Trend Podcast, the official podcast of GamingTrend.com. My name is Anthony Shelton, and I am joined by David Burdett. Hello there. And Noah Rigsby. Hello, hello. In this podcast, we talk about the latest games we could get our hands on. We talk about games in our backlog we should have played a long time ago and games you absolutely need to play. We also squeeze in news. So this week, this is probably a more news-heavy podcast. I'm still finishing Overwatch Season 2. Noah's finishing Destiny 2 Season 1. But David, on the other hand, has been playing Dead Island 2. Oh, so yeah. we can talk about that. He's the most interesting man on the pod this time. <laughs> so we're like I'm the guy who managed to have something that was fresh. <laughs> I know I got I got ten levels left in Overwatch two before I start finishing okay. Destiny. So as someone who plays like five to ten hours of COD a week, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So David, tell us about Dead Island two. So De- Dead Island two. I think I'm more surprised that I'm playing it <laughs> because. It went through three to four studios and nine years of development time. And I think sometime last year, just all of a sudden it was like, Hey, dead Island two is actually coming out. And like the Amazon listing was there leaking it and all that. I'm like, well, if it's on Amazon, then it must be pretty close. Cause I wouldn't imagine they would throw up a listing. And what do you know? Uh, dead Island two is, uh, it's playable. And I think what's even more surprising is that Dead Island 2 is actually pretty solid. Uh, That wasn't something that I would expect when you have so many potential changes, uh, especially you question, there's there's obviously a foundation that's there, but how much does that get chipped on and whatnot when you go through all these different studio changes? Uh, Because everybody has an idea of how they want something to work. Everybody has an idea of what, you may still be using Unreal, for instance, but everybody has an idea how they want to use it. So <clears throat> I do wonder if this got just flat out rebooted completely whenever this latest studio came on board a Dam Buster. But, man, uh, all the trailers, I know that, uh, I don't know if anybody has seen a lot of them, but it actually is, the game is gorgeous. That, that's probably one of the things that really stood out to me right off the bat is all the character models, all the animations, uh, everything that you look at, like there's just this this depth of detail to it. It all looks really good. It, all the facial animations look really good. It might not necessarily be like Guardians of the Galaxy, which is in my mind is one of the top games recently we've had that when it comes to the, the facial animation technology. But this is pretty close especially for a game that i I would i would kind of say at this point this is a a double a title not a triple a title like some may may put it uh but it it seems to be very well worth the investment so far when it comes to the the environment there's just a lot of attention to detail the the rich one of the areas that i ran through at the beginning you're you're actually running through the the bel-air mansions of Hollywood and it's just kind of this I know that there's lots of different places that you go and whatnot in different video games I I don't remember a lot of places where I've run through like Hollywood mansions (laughs) in a video game so it's kind of a a nice interesting locale Uh, one of the areas that I really liked is they actually have you go on on one of your missions to get through to the next area you actually have to go through a gamer mansion. Uh, one of the like a, it's it's like the content creator mansion where they've got like this gaming room that they've got like the the essentially what I've got behind me. They've got the green screens. They've got the lights. Yeah. They've got the PC set up. Uh, they've got it when you go out to like the pool area. You see like a bunch of uh, almost a stage set up with a bunch of lights and a camera. So where somebody would be doing their different videos and whatnot. Um, like it's just a neat setting that they've chosen to go with something that, that actually works really well for this. And I'm glad they decided to make this change compared to what a lot of, of these games head for. This is not an open world game. Uh, Dead Island two is not a, a classic, like I, I 
hate to use it as a comparison since it's technically the competitor, but Dying Light 2 is a fully open world game. You, you have to, the ability to just run around everywhere. Where with Dead Island, you can run around a lot of different places, do a lot of things on the side, but it would be more akin to something like, like Deathloop or Dishonored in the sense of they are more open areas that you go to. And when you want to go and explore other places, you go to, there's a, they're treating it like this, these different areas are almost quarantined off with these military gates. So you'll go to these different spots. You'll move into the next area. There'll be a loading screen. It's not very heavy duty with the loading, obviously, since SSDs have made things really easy with it. So you almost don't notice it beyond the loading and that there there does feel there is a bit more of a compact feel to the levels. But on that same token, I like games that are a little bit more compact recently. Uh, not every game has to be this. It takes me five hours to walk from this side of the map to this side of the map. Uh, it's cool to get to explore big open worlds. But sometimes you just want a nice little slice. And I feel like Dead Island, where it may be similar to something like Dying Light 2, it's going to have its own niche and that it, it definitely there's some a brighter feeling to it but it's also just this more compact experience that gives it its own feel um with all of that said obviously you can't do anything right if you don't have your gameplay right <laughs> and dead island 2 is a heck of a lot of fun uh, the zombies are fantastic they have a a lot of different models and one of the ways they do that is it's, it's not just clothes, it's not just all these different things, but different parts of the zombies, they've got their own uh, flesh engine to it, where the zombies, like, specifically, like, certain parts of them are more hanging or ripped apart or whatnot, and when you actually attack the zombies, you have the opportunity to, like, if I hack specifically at the right leg with a, with a knife, I have the opportunity to chop it off. Or in the same thing happens with like the right arm, left arm, you can get down to the limbs with it. Uh, same thing happens if you're hacking towards the head. Uh, the head won't come off right away or whatnot. But if you get to the point where you're thin to the health bar, uh, that thing's coming off uh, as soon as you get the killing blow. So there's lots of cool ways that they've taken this whole flesh engine, whatever you want to call it, system in the game and been able to use it not only with the design of these zombies, but with your actual hitting at them specifically so that you can do things to them, which they, they are gross. Uh, the zombies are, are nasty and like they, they zombies are, but half the time when you're playing like, like for instance with dead Island too, like they're, they're more nuisances. If that makes sense, like a, I'm not like freaking out over them or anything. I'm just trying to kill them as fast as I can as they come in droves and whatnot. In in Dead Island 2, they feel a lot more, and I don't know if it's just the game itself where you, you can't take as many hits, but I really think it's just the atmosphere that they've set with these things just look disgusting. They look scary. Uh, the sound design is really good with with just the moaning and the the, the sounds of the full, the dead flesh and whatnot as you hack at it. Um, there are moments, and I hate... <sighs> QTEs suck enough, but a QTE is even worse when you're suddenly grabbed by a zombie and it's, like, in your face. <laughs> yeah. And, like, trying to bite at you. And with these things being so disgusting, it, it's, it's kind of terrifying... Uh, it's especially terrifying when you open a random bathroom door in a hotel and all of a sudden one lunges out and grabs you. <laughs> it's like that. It's that jump scare that you just kind of, you know, it's probably going to happen because this is a zombie game. But man, they've done a good job at making it just kind of freaky and, and, and it actually kind of bugs you a little bit. Like I, I actually got to a point that uh, with the, some of the sound design, especially where I was wearing my headset around my uh, neck because I didn't want to hear <laughs> a lot of what was going on because it was just unsettling. Like I was, it was uneasy. And 
they just they've done a really good job with that and i i have to get tip my hat to damn buster uh beyond that the types of zombies are kind of cool with some of the different things that they've done with it because it's not just the okay you've got your normal grunt and then you've got the big heavy dude and then you've got the dude who's going to throw up or whatever blow up or whatnot like they've gone a little bit further to try and change things up there are zombies that for whatever reason they're like on fire and because of this uh if you have like a weapon that has a mod to cause fire damage it won't affect those zombies they're they're actually immune to that so you'll have to think about changing up how you're doing certain attacking them. Uh, there was one that was a shock zombie for some reason. I'm not exactly sure what the reason was for it. But the shock zombie actually, like, it's it's this intermittent, like, all of a sudden it's this electrical charge. It builds up and this just shoots out. <laughs> and that was kind of interesting because I actually was able to take advantage of that with a specific piece of equipment where it was this meat that you'd throw on the floor and then all the zombies would go and start trying to eat on it. And because that zombie was in the middle of them, he would actually, his electrical pulse would go out. It would actually damage the other zombies. So you can kind of use some of this to your advantage when you're, when you're fighting these things. Uh, the weirdest one, and I'm sure there's probably even more since we only could we only played about five or six hours of it. There's a zombie that actually has an exposed rib cage, and there is a beehive in it. And if you attack this zombie, the bees start chasing you. <laughs> so you have to kill the zombie in order to get rid of this hive swarm of, of bees. So it's just one of those things of like, I appreciate your creativity, Dan Buster. That's a, I, I've played a lot of zombie games. I have never attacked one that had bees in it <laughs> or, or attacked me with bees. <laughs> How did they get there? I, I, I know that's the question. I, I guess the corpse was just kind of chilling and the I, bee, the queen made its way in there and then all of a sudden is all of a sudden became zombified. I don't know. Maybe I, I, they're zombie bees. I don't, I don't I zombies. More, I know yeah, it's like ter that's, terrible. That's what I'm trying to figure. Like, I would think that would, you know, I, more realistic if like, you know, the bees, like for something they could control the zombies could control the bees because of like, you know, something in the air or something you know I mean, but like be. was my homie just chilling under a you know a honey tree and the the high <laughs> fell into him after he had yeah. decayed like i that's really i don't know but it, but it's a fun it's a it's a fun different kind of zombie and i just get the feeling that there's probably a lot more of these as you continue to go through the game because uh, you wouldn't just you wouldn't just go crazy in the first couple of hours of the game with, yeah. with every type so there's there's definitely going to be some other ones that are going to be around uh i also like that they're very specific and like they actually give you a name plate with the zombies so it's, it's like a classical almost rpg style with numbers and everything um that makes your life a bit easier because for instance i had to get to another area but i didn't have the key to get through the quarantine gate and you get like a little bit of a the person the your character talks and like gives you kind of a clue as to what you should probably be looking for when you go up and realize you don't have the key. Well, it's it ends up being very obvious. I, I hate to say obvious because it isn't obvious, obvious, but you get a you're able to kind of figure out that, OK, that's probably what's going on and, and find the correct zombie to kill to get the key. So you don't even have to engage the entire horde if you don't want to, if you're smart enough to use your abilities, equipment, and weapons to be able to take out that one zombie. So I, I was it was a it was a lot of fun with just the zombies in general, just how different they've made them. And it's just it's just a gore fest when you're fighting those things. Like it there's just blood going everywhere and just the way that you can attack these things. Uh, you can uh, not completely if you get like blunt weapons you can knock them silly like 
that's that's part of it is you can actually knock them down and whatnot. So that they're they really went over over a Above and beyond, that's more what I'm looking at, not overboard. Above and beyond in trying to make all of this flesh and physics and all this different systems work together to make this a lot of fun to play. I I will say that, unfortunately, the weapons in the game are still breakable. That being <laughs> said, it's it's more the fact that you have eight at a time that you can equip and you can pick up even more than that and just swap them out. For the most part, you can do stuff that will make them less breakable. They're not breakable. They're not very breakable very fast, especially once you get mods in place. And I do like the fact of even if I mess one up completely, I don't lose it out of my inventory. Instead, it's just it's just not functional. So I can go back and repair it. That way I don't lose like the best weapon that I have. I can go back, repair it, and then start fighting again, which there largely were a lot of workbenches around that I could use as I progress through the world. So for the most part, I was able to do a lot of repairs very quickly. So so I, I was never really worried that, oh, crap, I just lost my best weapon. Uh, I'm not going to be at a level where I can fight the, uh, uh, my level seven knife is gone. So I got to go through here with level four. Uh, I didn't have a lot of moments where I was worried about that, which on that note, uh, I know I mentioned the whole RPG numbers as you hack at these things, whatnot, the zombies themselves have levels, uh, just like something like Skyrim and whatnot, where, and sometimes it progresses up as you level. Uh, other times it, is higher than you are in certain spaces so you sometimes you got to go back and do those side missions to give yourself the extra umph to get through because i i went to a hotel and i was supposed to clear out the lobby and i just kept dying over and over and over i went back i finished a side mission that was that they had and then killed a couple more zombies and whatnot when i came back i had the i was at the level where i could really take them on a little bit easier Plus, it didn't hurt because, you know, I'd been able to go back and pick up some different health items and, and better weapons and stuff. So it this is a game where it's worth going around and picking stuff up, like even though there it does seem like the level does raise a bit on the ones you're fighting. It, it's not like it's not like something like I think. I forget what Final Fantasy it was, but one of the Final Fantasies, I said there's literally no reason to just level grind because all of the enemies just automatically jump to your level, level scale. Uh, this feels like a lot friendlier of a level scale where your opening area enemies are not just going to stay at level one, but they're also not going to follow you when you're at nine to level nine. <clears throat> So it, it makes it worthwhile for you to take the time to level up. And I appreciate that because not enough games seem like they, some games just want to let you just run through, do whatever the heck you want. And other games want to give you way overboard of a challenge. So it's nice to know that I, my time is appreciated when I'm doing stuff. And with it being a more compact game, I'm hoping that this ends up making everything less padded. Because that's one issue that we've talked about with open world games before is you end up with like, OK, do all these 15 different missions and, you know, there's only so many pigeons I want to catch in Spider-Man before I'm bored. Uh, I did all of them so that I could get the platinum trophy, but I can't say that my experience was enriched because I went around catching pigeons <laughs> in Spider-Man. Uh, that's something I think Dead Island has a chance of being better because it's a more compact experience. So there's the opportunity to introduce less padding and you can already see it in the side missions because the side missions feel a lot more like full experiences. Uh, I talk about it in our written preview, but there's one where you go back through that gamer mansion as you're on your way back and you encounter a, I guess that version of the world's TikTok. She's a streamer and she's trying to kill zombies and catch it on video and everything. And 
because she can't film and kill them at the same time, she actually has you kill some of them as they come through. But she she has you do that specifically. Like at the beginning, you're at the beginning, you're trying to get them to catch on fire to die, and, and then you'll get to the next wave, and it's okay. Can you hack off the limbs specifically? Like it's, it's taking what the game is doing well and then putting it into this side mission, and it makes it feel fun in the middle of all of this. So I'm, I, I appreciate what they're doing, and I hope that those kind of missions are what they continue to put into this uh, instead of like, hey, I need this. Can you go get this item from X point? <laughs> uh, this, this, you have, they have a good impression from me on the side missions. Um, what's funny though, the story missions, like, it's it's a good enough impression on it. I don't know what's going on beyond we need to evacuate, but I like the fact that the tone is not too serious. Uh, I feel like a lot of zombie games, Dying Light 2 really had a trouble with this, is it was all about being the serious, we're in the zombie apocalypse. We, and understandably, very serious uh, setting, but Dead Island 2 goes a lot more along the lines of funny, making quips as I kill zombies kind of style stuff. And there's some seriousness behind it, but they know when to put that seriousness in there and when to not have it in there, it feels like. So I don't know if it's going to be the entire, the entirety of the story, but... I, I don't think I have enough story so far to work with to know. Uh, it, it at least is it at least is good so far. So they they we'll have to see how the final hours of the game shapes up. But beyond that, uh, the the characters are interesting. <laughs> the Slayers, right? Yeah, the calling? Slayers. Yeah, the one of them is a. I thought he was a firefighter. Turns out he is just a male stripper. Firefighter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because you know, zombie apocalypse got to have something random in there. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize until after I had already picked the character. Um, you actually pick between six, as like it, it's one of those things of the game starts. Everybody's getting on this plane to get away. One of the people on the plane turns into a zombie. The plane starts to crash. You choose somebody as the plane is going down, more or less. Like it's like the freeze frame. <laughs> uh, one of the characters that I picked did not realize Amy. She is a Paralympian. So the reason I found that out is because one of the abilities you have is if you knock down a zombie and they're staggered enough or low enough health, you have the option to stomp on their head. When I stomped on their head, I stomped down with my uh, metal leg that a Paralympian would be wearing. And that was just, a, like I said, it was a really cool way to find that out. Um, overall, it's just solid. Like it's just a really solid game, and I did not, I did not expect a game that sh most people didn't think would ever come out would be this solid. Did um, did each Slayer have their own like kit? Is there is there a reason to pick between the different Slayers or? Yes. So each one has specific. They the leveling system is a little bit different. With the way that they do it, it's actually more skill based as opposed to bumping up stats. So that actually means that your slayers are, because of the way that they've built each one of the slayers, there's actually a point to going and playing a different one depending on what your style may be. For instance, Amy being the Paralympian, her agility is immediately very high, uh, which also means she earns the dodge skill card very early and that's one of the abilities you immediately have whereas ryan since he's the the bigger uh male stripper firefighter he actually starts off the game with being able to block um you can eventually get the ability to block with amy but it's an eventual thing as opposed to that being a skill she gets right away uh the skill cards i'm i never have liked card systems for anything uh, I know we played Back for Blood, and I still don't completely get what was happening as I was clicking cards. Beyond, pretty much, I sat there and I was like, "Health, health, 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 health." <laughs> whenever we were going, whenever we would play Back for Blood, but 
with this, it, I guess it's at least a little more understandable. Uh, and maybe it's just that I've pl I played it a little bit longer. I messed around with it, but the it's one of the things I wrote about was it doesn't matter if you use an extra health if you get the perfect dodge card. If you're just going to run in and just hit people, just wail on people like it's a pointless card for you to use. So it's good to and it's kind of the same with the Slayer. There's no reason for me to pick a character like Amy if I'm going to run into an entire horde because she's not as good running into a big horde of zombies. Whereas Ryan, he's a bigger dude. He can handle himself given some of his different skills and whatnot in the middle of a bigger one. So it encourages you to play the game differently, but you also have to pay attention to what you're getting with like these cards as you're you're adding these kind of things. Uh, the weapons also have perks that you can add to them. Uh, like for instance, you can actually give up durability for more forceful hit was one of the things that you could add to a weapon. Uh, whereas there was one that was, I can't remember exactly what I gave up, but it, it, it was also, it was lightweight, uh, but I lost a little more of the impact of it. So, so I could do a little bit more damage, but I was giving up something else. So it, there's some interesting ways that they're doing the leveling system. I'm again, not as big of a fan of the skill card thing, but at least it is one of those things of there are slots that you add them into. And there's a couple different slots of types of skill cards. So it's not something that is going to, you're not going to get a card and like spend all day trying to figure out how it fits into the grand scheme of things. You'll, you'll pick your four or five cards for each slot and you'll move on with your day. Uh, but it's worth paying attention to since the, your style of how you're going to play dead Island, you'll get ben more benefit out of those cards. If you pay attention to what it is. So hopefully that was a very long answer to your question of, <laughs> is there a reason to play other slayers? Yes, there are, there are quite a few reasons. Uh, I like, like I said, recap because, of yes. Yeah. There, <laughs> there, there's not a, there's not a, specific skill tree so it's it makes it worth going back and being like hey game's a little bit different if i play i play this a lot a little different if i play as like ryan or something okay but yeah anthony went and ran away after before we he got to hear about the bees so the zombies <laughs> <laughs> You I listened to it in. when I like, oh, go, go back and listen. Go back like, and yeah, listen. Yeah, we just, we, we don't need to I was, recap. Well, I was thinking. I was like, do I want him to repeat? Nah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just. I'll just. Yeah. I had to use the bathroom. You know, that's, it is what it is. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Dead Island Two coming April twenty first. Uh, a doing. lot, a lot better than I expected it to be. Okay. Fantastic. Nice. Dead Island too. Great. And you can uh as of the time of this podcast, it should be up and ready for you to read. Ooh. All right. Here you go. Find that on gamingtrend.com. <laughs> all right, David. What's the news? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all no, got me no, talking no. a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> no no time for rest. Yep. No, an, yep. So we're going to start off with a little bit of fun uh, Activision Blizzard news because God knows there's always a nugget of that like every week. Um, first off, there was a very interesting nugget that came out that says we knew, already knew that Microsoft wanted to uh, or is offering PlayStation a 10-year contract so that it will be on PlayStation post-acquisition, which we've also heard that they're also saying that they want to be on PlayStation long term. In the end, Call of Duty is going to be on PlayStation, just like Minecraft is on PlayStation. We've already talked about that. The interesting thing is that if I'm remembering, I don't remember exactly who said it, but it was said that Microsoft is offering for Call of Duty to be on PlayStation Plus. I'm, I'm assuming premium on day one, which is a very interesting tidbit <laughs> because that, I mean, if it's on Game Pass day, one is already assuming they want to get this on Game Pass. What's the best mm -hmm. way to keep people from fighting about Game Pass? Stick it on 
PlayStation Plus Premium Day One. What are y'all's thoughts on that? I mean, I we both know that Microsoft is all about subscription services. So, I mean, it, that makes sense for them to be like, hey, why don't you try out our philosophy? <laughs> you want to expand on that a little bit? <laughs> I'm, I'm well, not following that. Well, you know, Microsoft's all, you know, we're not to sell physical copies. We're all about Game Pass. Game Pass, Game Pass. So I'm curious if they're wanting to try it out by putting in that little bit on the subscription to see how well it does. That's my first thought. My second thought is there's a reason. I feel like a sneaky reason as to why they're, they're doing that. I'm almost curious if it's a kind of getting more money from Sony or like, I feel like they're, that's just not something that you just pull out of your hat and offer to them i i think there's so maybe underlying... a bigger sp- maybe a bigger split of money if it's yes, on the there's, subscription there's service yeah like which in in general if you add it to the subscription service you're going to make more a good amount of money cuz i don't think i don't think call of duty as much as i think it's a benefit on a subscription service there are quite a few people who aren't buying that the subscription service just for call of duty i get, you and i know from working at GameStop for so long, Noah, there are some people that literally that's the only game they play. Yep. So signing up for PlayStation Premium, signing up for Game Pass, that sounds great to us who play a lot of games. But I mean, why would I spend 150 bucks a year for a subscription service for games I don't play when I could just spend 70 bucks on a game that I'm going to play all the time? Like, I mean, they're paying for plus anyways. So... I, yeah. Well, still, if it's all I play, yeah. there's no reason for me to subscribe yeah. to something. That yeah, it's it'll be hard to convince like those people. I feel weird saying those people like it's like, but yeah, <laughs> it's it's just interesting. Um, yeah, I I think there's there's a sneaky like fills up to something. Like I I don't know. I'm I'd like well, to have a, a off record convo with them about it. In any case, it can ingratiate you with the the different, uh, I forget what you call them, the commissions by saying, oh, mm-hmm. we're offering for it to be on the subscription service as well. So I think yeah, that I would mean, uh, jump up the uh, whatever extra plus thing, the, the higher I think subscriptions would go up dramatically. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'm following the whole put it on PlayStation Plus and and see what happened. Like the reason why I think they're offering it is pretty clear that this is what Microsoft is doing in terms of like they don't really care about like what everybody else is doing. How is our subscriptions doing? So in terms of what David was saying, that's that's the tricky right there, which Sony will be able to read into that. But yeah, most people aren't going to, well, I won't say most. There are going to be quite a few people who are not going to pay the subscription fee to play Call of Duty that way. They're just going to buy the game and pay for the battle pass. In fact, to them, that would be paying twice per month for a season pack like that's more money to them but it does look good to the cma in the uk so microsoft plus there has to be some sort of royalties microsoft is going to get no matter what if it's if it goes through playstation plus playstation plus premium whatever I forget what the names of them are. They're going to get some sort of royalties on that. Sony's going to have to look at a, a bill from Microsoft and go, hey, how many, <laughs> you know, yep. we got Call of Duty on here. This is the percentage we're going to we're gonna get from your PlayStation Plus Premium subscriptions. Yep. Um, well, and this is a fun, it's funny you bring that up because what PlayStation actually fought back with, with the thought of this, 
uh, in a heavily redacted document, this is what it says. It says that PlayStation alleges that Microsoft would have significant leverage to manipulate the price of Call of Duty on PlayStation via the licensing fee that it decided to charge. And on the subscription, Sony claimed that it would destroy their multi-game subscription model because they could drive up the price of Call of Duty, which would force them to raise the price of their service or not offer Call of Duty on the service. And because of that, Microsoft could release Call of Duty exclusively on Game Pass as a service, and then they would dominate multi-game subscription services in the future because of that, which very interesting the way that it's all put. <clears throat> But essentially, yeah. the idea that, hey, yes, they're offering this, but they could charge us so much that it's not worth it for us to have it on our service, and then it's on their service. They must and think then, the CMA is stupid. Like, they genuinely must think the CMA, because at the end well, of the, the day... CMA keeps doing, the CMA keeps <laughs> giving them the, the wins in this, so... <laughs> Fair, but you don't have to agree to bad contractual terms. <laughs> Like, well, what's simple? Oh yeah, one well, they're not. They're what they're like, what they're saying though is that look, percent of your PlayStation Plus premium yeah. subscription fees. Sony doesn't have to go. Okay, yeah. fine. We'll have Call of Duty. No, they can say no. We don't yeah. want that. And uh, it, it's like buying a house. Like yeah. you put a price, well, they come back with the price. This is, and then you just go back and forth until you either settle or you don't. So well, I don't well, know. The, <laughs> well, the point is. that well the point that they're making is is that. Once all of this is said and done and Microsoft already has Activision, I think is what they're getting at is that's when suddenly the price goes up. It ends up on their it, it, the PlayStation can't afford it for their service. It drops off the service. Then Microsoft has Call of Duty exclusively with nobody to they already own it at that point. You don't make so, contracts based yeah. on the moment. You make contracts yeah. based on the future. So yep. Sony didn't foresee something like that in the contract. That's their problem. But clearly yep. they have foreseen it even before any kind of contract has been written up. They see how that would go. So yep. at the end of the day, Microsoft is saying, we're willing to do this. We're willing to even put it on your subscription service, which would actually benefit Sony. Like just from a per, like just for Sony subscription service. But Microsoft still has to write up an interesting and good enough terms of agreement yeah. for Sony to agree to it. It's that yeah. simple. But Sony's out here making it like we're victims. We have no control over anything that Microsoft is. No, you absolutely have to control because you have to agree to it. Not after 10 years. No, not after 10 years, but you still have it for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, By that's... that time, who knows where Call of Duty is at? By that time, yeah. perhaps two or three of Sony's live services are just banging. They don't even yeah. need Call of Duty anymore. In fact, they're like, Microsoft, you can take back Call of Duty because we're earning so much money that we get to keep. We ain't got to pay y'all nothing. Yeah. You don't know. 10 years is a long time. Yeah. Well, they're they're just try they're trying to bet on the horse that's uh, winning the race right now. Which is which throw everything I, at the CMA. Which I can't, which yeah. I, I, I can't completely blame them. I can't completely, but what I can blame them for is this funny one that also came up in the middle of all this, since we're talking about these filings, where Sony claims that Microsoft could release buggy Call of Duty games on PlayStation consoles. So done with Sony. <laughs> hey, once again, if it works, you use it. <laughs> I'm not saying it's Sony. not an asinine argument. I'm saying if they listen, you keep doing it. <laughs> I know. The... <laughs> But yeah, the uh, that was the what they said is that there's a myriad of ways Microsoft could withhold or degrade access would be which would be extremely difficult to monitor and police. And if Microsoft failed to comply with its commitment, it would likely only risk paying a fine, possibly many years later. But rivals' access to Call of Duty would be immediately foreclosed, irreparably damaging their ability to compete and ultimately harming consumers. Which, man, that's a really smart way to say, 
they might put buggy cod on our consoles which <laughs> i'll be honest i already got buggy cod on my computer so it's already I was fixing to say like <laughs> sony you do we need to talk about the the freezing kill cam glitch i had on my game <laughs> for about four days that i had yep. to go to youtube and find the workaround and the fix for that you didn't have on your site Yep. Oh, I had a I had a mess up on my computer with the, it was the same kind of kill cam thing. I literally had to die on a streak in search and destroy uh, because my uh, game became a flip book until I did. <laughs> wow. Literally, like it, the frame rate was that bad. I could I actually won several gunfights. I was like, how the crap? <laughs> because it was just aiming in a general direction and be like, oh, spray and pray, baby. <laughs> Yeah, buggy cod's already there, so yeah, but I, it, it, it's throwing I, it against throw it against the throw it against the wall. See what sticks. That's where we're at. Or look, where I'm we've not, been. Where we've been. I I have done very very little development in my life, and I've never done anything on a AAA level. But I can't imagine that it would be so simple for the developers who are making a multi-platform game to go. Hmm. How do we stick some specific PlayStation Five code in here to make it buggy on play? Like, yeah. <laughs> such a ridiculous See, idea. A, a better argument in my mind would be because Xbox and this once again not even a bit. It's a it's better than this argument. <laughs> Let's just put it this way: it's better than this argument. It's not a great argument. It's just better than this argument. Would be because Xbox would become the lead platform there would be a chance that other platforms would suffer because they're not because of the development would be focused on Microsoft's platform as opposed to our platforms You're like that, the same that's, thing. It's just I'm just saying wording. it's still it's still a much <laughs> better way to argue it sounds it, better. It sounds it's not better, yeah. it doesn't sound like oh they might add bugs in it's more well, bugs put, may exist because we'll we're not being cut. looked after <laughs> Put what Sony said and then put what you said on a resume. You'll get a PR job. I promise you. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was the yes. exact same thing said. Um, no, Just said I, better. I, I, feel, <laughs> I agree. Um, I feel like for if, if Sony really had a concern, the concern would be what they're already doing, which is yeah. the stuff comes to our platform first. And then it comes to a different platform later, or at least they've done that in the past. Well, so, used to, used to, yeah. Well, Xbox did that before they did. Uh, of course, of course. So they could Every, use that argument. Everybody that yeah. actual argument that both have done. Yeah. Um, and since Call of Duty has grown since then, you know, the the monetary hit could be much bigger now. But obviously, I mean, the CMA doesn't even recognize that Sony is. <laughs> being hypocritical with a lot of their arguments <laughs> yeah. anyway because they've done it uh in some form or fashion maybe not with call of duty but certainly with other games so i don't know that all of it is insane uh sony is definitely feeling the pressure i've been hearing on different like non-video game stuff like reuters and yahoo finance that uh this uk is going to pass this for microsoft like it it they're going to be fine with the deal at the end of the day. Um, so I guess this is the kind of stuff you, you start throwing out there when your back's against the wall. <laughs> yep. Well, and in all fairness, everybody's been throwing like, like Microsoft's made itself sound like it's such a horrible company and how COD is such a minuscule part of the industry and stuff too. So none yeah. of these companies are, <laughs> none of these companies are acting in good faith they're acting on their own behalf of like, course <laughs> for every stupid oh but they might make cod buggy on our console there's a well cod's not that big and we're just little old microsoft who can't compete in this space <laughs> which is kind of true <laughs> yeah not not the little part but man they're, they're not good at making games it, it is it is funny like just just how petty both sides is argument like there are great arguments that both of these companies could make but what arguments have they both gone to <laughs> like it's like okay 
we know the truthful argument isn't going to work. <laughs> so let's just go with the most random, crazy sounding argument that we could possibly like, like the fact that they did went with the, the, the graph with the 80, 20 split between PlayStation <laughs> and micro like, like Nintendo literally does not exist in the industry that that's the split. <laughs> like, it's just funny. I also find it funny that they also that Microsoft apparently thinks that they can make a native version of Warzone and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 for the Nintendo Switch. They said Switch, not the next thing. Uh, multiple Activision, uh, from what Charlie Intel has heard, multiple people from Activision said they thought that the console would pretty much explode if they tried to make a version for the Switch. So I, I would be very interested to see how that would work, especially since people are uh, always begging for content and we're barely getting that from the devs that exist. So what devs you pulling from where to, to make that <laughs> Switch version? Huh. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be an 18-bit or yeah, some I'm bit saying. version of COD. Maybe they can bring back 10,000 of those uh, developers they laid off at Microsoft. They're, they're not all devs, so I can't say much. I can, <laughs> all the all the hundred people that left three four three, they can yeah. come back yeah. and be three, the, four, three. the COD war. They're the COD war zone team. <laughs> you could get For the three Switch. four three people who were laid off, the coalition people who were laid off, and create a new studio called the Remnant, and they can work <laughs> on the Switch version of Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, no three four three now t- three four three now title now two thirteen. Yeah, <laughs> we lost that many devs. Okay, moving on to better news. Uh, Microsoft has dated their summer Xbox Games Showcase. We are going to talk a lot more about what comes after the showcase, Starfield. After this, but the event is going to take place on June eleventh, which is a Sunday right before E3. Uh, I believe most of us should be getting into town for good old E3 right around that time. So we're going to have a lot to talk about when it comes to what Xbox has to show. Uh, We know for a fact that Starfield is going to be at the showcase, but it is going to be after the showcase, the Starfield Direct that they're going to show off. So we are not going to get anything Starfield related in the actual show. So what what does Xbox have for this show, do you think? Everything that we know about. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises. For- yeah. Forza. Um, do you think Forza can- gets a date here? Yeah. Um, I can't <laughs> I can't think of it any more off the top of my head, but I, I, I wouldn't mean, mind a, a huge one. Hades to early access date. Or a window. Okay. Well, we're. That's I would I assuming. Want. I would assume that we are definitely getting uh, something. Uh, thir- we're going to get plenty of third party. Maybe we, Hollow Knight Silk we... Song may show up. <laughs> so I mean, we're to, uh, obviously okay. Game Pass, but are we just first party stuff, or are we talking? I mean, like we can. We can talk. Can show up. We could talk th- some third party. We don't know about a lot of the third party that show up, but uh, first party especially. Um, I would say you're going to see Hellblade 2, uh, and I would not be surprised if it does not get a release window. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being their November game, like they put it as a fall-winter game. Of course, probably get delayed out of it, but I would not be surprised if uh, Hellblade doesn't get another big bash. It may, it may be one of the centerpieces of their show beyond Starfield, which, once again, Starfield comes after this showcase so starfield's gonna get its flowers so you gotta have something as the crux of your e3 show since this is your big blowout yeah it's i'm just i'm trying to think of like what i want to see like what kind of surprises what i want to see from their first party studios but i mean i'd love to see gear six but i'm assuming that's so super early in development since all the teams got kind of restructured back yeah i mean they might do like a a logo announcement or something like that but i really um um i wouldn't be surprised if we see whatever comes next for redfall like the because redfall have been out a month at this point so they'll be like hey this is might like maybe a they'll go, hey the dlc roadmap. the roadmap or dlc could see that. Um, I'm trying to see if I can look up some of the different stuff. 
Oh, avowed? Maybe we're, we're, I forgot about avowed. We, we could see avowed. They will probably have... Um, uh, what game was it? Well, I know they Arc might have two. an update for Fable. That's what I'm thinking of. I would love like, to get an update, update for Fable. I just, uh, it, I've heard it's miles out. Is what I've yeah 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 pretty much sure. pretty much everything that isn't avowed and uh, Hellblade. It sounds like like Everwild. Highly doubt we see, don't we see anything for that. I'm wondering if we maybe get something from State of Decay three because that got announced a long time ago and. The only the only issues there were there were studio issues. It wasn't necessarily the game. I think specifically with the studio. So, yeah, I think at this point we're not going to see a whole bunch of first party stuff except for updates. Yeah, we'll see. You but, know, whatever's coming next for Sea of Thieves. That's almost a guaranteed. You almost always get one little thing from them. Yeah, I'm you looking think- at all the studios, and I'm like, eh, <clears throat> I don't know what they're going to show, but they are going to have a lot of probably deals for Game Pass that they'll, they're they going to show off, whatever do you those think are. We, do you think we see a Tatanka or whatever that is? The, uh, the uh, Halo BR, the supposed Halo BR? Do you think that might be something they might surprise with? It's possible. It, it's possible. I guess the question would be is if they're reworking yeah. it with Unreal. Well, Tataka has been in development in Unreal, as far as oh, I okay. understand. So Yeah, that would mean it would have a good better chance then. Yeah. I don't know. Um, That'd be interesting. Uh Stalker too. I would love to get a date okay. on that. I know yeah. they've been they've dealt with a lot it, of yeah. uh issues with, you know, the the war. So that's been unfortunate. Uh hope I would love if, if they could get a date for that uh, i will say the last trailer they showed off it wasn't as impressive as the first trailer like it looked it did not look as shiny okay <laughs> I, I i know it's a funny thing to say it's just it just not look as good it did not look as good I, I don't want to get into downgrade gate and all that stupidity because games can still look great it just didn't look as as pretty as it did before yeah well that's why it's still in development but i haven't even seen the second trailer but I, w- I would like to see a date. I think we could see a date for it. Good. I, I feel like that's an important, like, tied over game, like, to keep your flow of games going. Oh, yeah, sure. I just, Roundhouse Studios, what are they re- working on? I don't know. <laughs> uh, n- nothing. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I, don't, I know, I don't who, I know who might be next. Uh, Compulsion, the team behind We Happy Few. I know. What are they working? But I wouldn't we be surprised if we don't see what they're working on. Yeah. Um, Indiana Jones that got announced out of Machine Games, which we haven't heard really anything from Machine Games either. Yeah. I wonder if we might see. What's Rare been doing lately? <laughs> well, they're they're on Everwild, which has yeah. gone through massive. Re- it got massive reboots. Okay, so I that, heard it yeah, was that maybe next stuck. year. So. Yeah. So uh beyond that, uh crap. I had one in my head and I just missed it. We know we don't know what machine games is on, obviously. Like I said, Indiana Jones, we maybe we'll see that. Um All right. Up here, I got a list. I'm just gonna run through the list. Three four three, maybe to talk about. Alpha Dog Games. I don't even know who that is. Uh okay. Alpha Dog. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> uh, who that? Oh, Alpha Dog uh, that's why they're a mobile focused developer. <laughs> Acquired by Bethesda, so. Gotcha. Uh, All right, Bethesda, we know what they're working on. We know we're getting Starfield Direct. Double fine. I mean, it might be early in the cycle. I I know they make smaller games, but it may be a little bit early for anything from them. Maybe a teaser for the next thing that they're doing? (sighs) My only thing on that is I feel like Microsoft, at least to a degree, has learned their lesson. I agree. I say that, but... They've learned their lesson from announcing 500 games and then us getting none of them. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I feel like you can do that with certain studios. Double yeah. Fine being one of them, Bethesda yeah. being one of them, because you know Bethesda games are going to take 10 years anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I do. I do think the funny thing though is I feel like they learned their lesson from that, but they learned it too hard. 
because then they did this whole 12 months thing and you cannot always control that, which we'll get into that in the next, we'll get into the yeah. next thing. But yeah, that, that was uh, I feel like that was a fault or two. It's software. It, I mean, you could see whatever's next for doom, but they may even be working on a new IP. I would, I would be, re- it'd be really cool if we saw a new IP out of them, but I would uh, imagine yeah. it's probably doom three. Cause mm-hmm. that was a crit doom two was a critically acclaimed eternal was. So in exile in exile, they did, aren't they the wasteland? No tides of Numenera. Oh yeah. And wasteland. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, they're probably working on whatever's next for wasteland. I would, I would assume, but maybe uh, not. Okay. Mo Another Yang, we know they're doing the movie. Minecraft thing. Yeah. They just do whatever. And, and legends will have just released. So yep. we may get a legends update, something content oriented. Do, do uh, we know what uh, Studio MDHR is doing after Cuphead? I don't, that's not a Microsoft studio, I don't think. But no, they could. Add, but they could do well, something they, with they, Xbox. Yep. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because wasn't know. Cuphead like Cuphead went to? Microsoft it's on Switch and PlayStation, first. but it but it was, was Xbox it went first. first. I think it, yeah, I think so they like, support. I think they supported them in getting the game onto console. So. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll see something from them. That would be cool. Um, Ninja Theory? They are just coming out with... Uh... Hellblade 2. We'll see that. Oh, that is... Okay. Yeah. I, I, that uh, I would just fully guarantee we're going to see. Agreed. Obsidian just released the, the... Well, they technically released Pentiment, uh, but that yep. was the smaller group. So main... The main studio they're working on avowed, and they're doing outer wild outer worlds yep. too. So okay. I, I don't think we'll see outer worlds too. We probably will get more of a deep dive on avowed though. I don't think it's dated though. That's one I think will probably hit next year. I don't think you drop it along with Hellblade this year, especially not with Starfield in September. Yeah, they're running out of time this year. They have Roundhouse Studios. That's another Bethesda. Developer, but what they're have providing, they done? They're providing support to Arcane on Redfall oh, okay. right now. Gotcha. So it doesn't sound like they've created anything yet. It, but, and it was, and even if they have somebody, it's a real small team and very early pre-production. More than likely, uh, Tango GameWorks. We know they just did Hi-Fi Rush, which was fantastic. I would assume that was probably a smaller, again, another one of those smaller parts of the studio though so you never know they may yeah. tango official maybe on something bigger but they did just lose makami so who knows yeah um the coalition we know that's gears the initiative that's perfect dark turn 10 that's forza undead labs uh that's a state of decay and are they working on the third like yes, you know that that, that okay. was actually announced um before the series x came out so mm, that okay. I that it was the they had a lot of studio in house problems I think with some sexual assault or some sexual harassment allegations and stuff. Okay. Uh World's Edge. I don't do? recognize that studio. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Neither do I. I was like, wait, who's World's Edge? Yeah, because I was looking, I was like, what the uh let's see. And then Zenimax oh, online. Oh, uh, Age of doing Empires. Elder Scrolls yeah. online. Yep. Uh, which Zenimax <clears throat> aren't they working on a AAA IP, a new one? I heard that they were. They might be. Possibly. That would be nice. Be really nice. But guarantee you they'll also have some different third. They'll have a ton of third party there. Yeah, I and think the, and a the... ton. I wonder what bi- what's interesting is we know that there's plenty coming out this year, but there's not a lot that's just full on settled, I feel like, this year. So maybe that's I'm what curious. this is about. Yeah, I'm curious what settle. kind of stuff we might get. Yeah. Dates will start falling into place. Yeah. If that conf- if that showcase, whatever, is loaded with dates, like from first party studios it's going to be a very good showcase yep i imagine we'll get honestly forza and hellblade are the ones i expect to be the big ones 
yeah, if there's no dates on those, that's going to be awkward. <laughs> yep. Agreed. Agreed. All right. What's next? Next is Starfield itself. Starfield is coming out officially in September, September 6th, and the Direct is going to take place on June 11th, right after the Xbox game show. Uh, The biggest thing that we have had some conversation of in the Gaming Trend Discord, which you can go and join and get in on that with us, is that uh, whether or not this was a delay, because I am fully in accordance with it being a delay, because... They said that every game that they showed was going to be playable in 12 months. Forza got delayed, and this got delayed. <laughs> so you can't make... They, they didn't make... They made a promise. They weren't able to keep to it. And it's okay. It happens. But it it was a delay. They I don't think the game was polished enough for them to want to release it. And they were like, hey, let's go ahead and take the extra time. Ain't going to hurt to get away from some of these big games like Zelda and... Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy 16 and Diablo 4. Like that it's just if in any case it's smart to not release super close. Like it, I get it. It's it would be a month out from some of these and Final Fantasy's only PlayStation. You're still share it's the mind share argument. People forget that when you release if you release within a month of Zelda and of something like Final Fantasy 16, we saw what Elden Ring did. Elden Ring had the mind share for months <laughs> that, that was all that was on Twitter. When you went around, you yeah. don't want to chance your game having its mind share taken. So was it a delay? It, and it honestly is, it, it was a business move too, but is is that delay of, Hey, let's go ahead and take, take our time. Let's polish this bad boy up. Cause God knows that it isn't a Bethesda game unless it has bugs. Cause God knows it's going to come out and it's going to still have bugs. Uh, but I'm fully in agreement with what Ryan McCaffrey of IGN said, and that this has to be the most polished Bethesda game we have ever gotten. It doesn't mean there won't be bugs, but this has to. If it comes yeah. out in a sucky shape, it, there's not a game in Xbox history that it has the same pressure that this game has on it at this point for a first party game. Oh, that's because Halo Infinite's already that out there, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, this this one has a ton of pressure on it. Yeah, so so yes, numerically it's a delay. Duh. Yes, it's releasing in <laughs> September sixth. Yes, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but there are different kinds of delays that exist, right? So you know, when you have a delay, I am of the mindset that all delays are good because you, you recognize there's a problem. And you need to fix it so you push push back the release date so all delays in my opinion are good but delays come with different i guess uh stipulations is the only word that's coming to my mind but uh you have something like um was suicide squad which is just recently delayed that uh that's i mean that's that it's a delay and it's good because they get to polish it, but it's not really going to change much for it. So it's one of those delays that's just it. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. What we see, the core of it, the battle pass, all that stuff. It's that is Suicide Squad. What we don't have is just more information about how all of it is put together. So they delay it. That's fine. That's that kind of delay. You got Halo Infinite, which was delayed once. Everybody saw it, and everybody begged for it to be delayed. And they delayed it, and everybody cheered. They were like, yes, this is this. That's a fantastic kind of delay where we know everybody benefits from it. Of course, Halo Infinite still didn't. It it was better. It was absolutely better. I thought gameplay-wise, fantastic. Content live service stuff not great but does that doesn't seem what the delay was about fixing and then you have a delay like starfield where it's just like this wasn't a delay on the sense of like starfield's in trouble and we need to push it back this is a delay of no this is strictly a business decision we need to be flexible (laughs) they already did that one (laughs) the other one yeah 
<laughs> which is fine because it's Bethesda. So it's like, yeah, yeah, please take your time. But this was a business decision. If they release it in the first quarter of this year, which is not Microsoft's financial first quarter either way, but if they did that, they wouldn't have the time to tell us what Starfield actually is because we still don't really know what Starfield actually is. And they want to get people on that hype train. They want people to, to write that. The people want to write it. I've seen all kinds of posts across the internet. Lie to me, Todd Howard. Like that, that is literally <laughs> what people are saying. They're like, I want the snake oil salesman stuff. Like they are ready for this. They want to be on the hype train. That's fine. It's, it's the Michael Scott meme. I'm ready to be heard again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, if they release it within two months before, or two months after Redfall, uh, if I were Arcane, I'd be furious because, you know, you put in all this work for this game. I don't think it's going to be fantastic, but still, as a developer, you created this game. You would hate for your publisher to cannibalize the game that they also helped put money into with Starfield. Like, you don't want to do that. The big so thing is, though, is that was already a possibility, though, when you were a part of a showcase that said all these games are playable in the next 12 months. We don't know what the date was, though. Like, I there's guarantee still a they... chance, though. Yeah, there's there was still, still a, a chance. chance. There was still a chance. You're a business. You got to be flexible. Maybe at the time they thought they could. Maybe Red. Maybe Redfall was supposed to release this month. And so it's out for two months. Starfield comes out in the summer. And then that didn't work out. So then it was like, all right, well, we got Redfall coming within that 12 months. Starfield's not. Oh, well, who's who's really going to complain? So good business decision. You move it out to September. Gives you enough time to build your hype train. Let the people ride the hype train. Let us get a better understanding of what Starfield is, what it's going to look like, what it's going to play like. What are we actually really going to be able to do? And then the game comes out and nobody's complaining unless it sucks. What I think is incredible is the fact that some people have such great eyes that they can tell that the game is running at 60 frames per second from monitors in the background of the release video. <laughs> Until we those, see that thing yeah, running and so I see it running on my console, I ain't trusting ooh. nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, Those monitors looked green screened. Like, yeah. <laughs> like they cut that in there like perfectly. I that that was my take on it. I'm like, that's that's just looks really weird i don't know yeah i didn't pay know. attention it just i don't know just cut weird. but yeah smart decision though like for yeah. sure i feel like it was uh i feel like it was coming a little bit sooner just because I, of the I fact i feel I, I i feel like starfield was coming sooner because of the way that they went with a a showcase is incoming like you don't just say stuff like that after that one showcase yeah and and that's what's going on like i, I, was, I feel like it, it it was intentional and then they were like and eh, let's polish this for three more months yeah i i Can felt like it was going to be yeah. <laughs> yeah i thought it was going to be like early summer yeah well, I, I, I thought they were literally going to release last day of june like in the 12 month window <laughs> <laughs> yeah Gets in on oh, yeah, you mentioned that. yeah yeah, I, well, because yeah. January, because June thirtieth was a Friday. <laughs> it was. It seemed too perfectly set up. I, I think that was honestly. Well, I would not be surprised at ends, all. I mean, some the, technically the summer solstice, I believe, ends September twenty first. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, but it's the twelve months though. We're not talking yeah, no, summer. We're talking yeah, about twelve true. months. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I felt it was going to be somewhere yeah. in there as well, but yeah, I feel I like should, that, that I should have known. Like once us. Redfall was in May, like that should have been the 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 tell. Like, oh no, well, Starfield's the, not going to release in the summer. Here's the fun. Here's the fun thing, though. Yes, that may have been the tell. Part of what shows me that this is not necessarily just a we don't want to cannibalize Redfall is because they said in the develop in the thing. In the article that said that was talking about the showcase where we learned of the Redfall date is where they said that we had a Starfield direct incoming soon. Okay. So they already knew they already knew what the date for Redfall was going to be when they said the Starfield 
released that the Starfield Direct was coming soon. So I, I still think that they were. Well, I know we already just agreed that it was June thirtieth, but I think they I think they were ready to launch June thirtieth and just was like, you know what, we want more polish on this game. Yeah, I'm sure. That or you know, I don't I don't feel like they have a sense of urgency to release it either. You know, when you've got all the devs sitting on those comfy couches playing green yeah. screen Starfield, you know. <laughs> Like, that guy who they said not, was like on the rush. same that guy who was on the same couch like back when oblivion <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> that was one of the weirdest right. comments i've seen this guy he was here on the same couch showing you all oblivion <laughs> i i really hope that's just some random guy that was like <laughs> touring the studio and like hey here you want to play you know test and he's like oh yes yeah. he's like oh yeah that's me and it's like completely the wrong guy as as much crap as I'm going to give this game, I'm going to play the absolute crap out of Starfield because I've been excited for Starfield ever since they showed the flipping logo. Like, I didn't know completely what it was. I just saw that it was a Bethesda game in space. I'm going to play the crap out of it. Uh, as long as it works. Whether or not I love it or hate it, <laughs> I'm definitely going to play the crap out of it to find out. That because music. I'm, yeah. Oh, that that da, 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 da. it just that, it. That, perfect, it. Yeah, that perfect yeah <laughs> <laughs> that perfect space that perfect it just it. don't ruin it it, it <laughs> gives you that it gives that you that feeling of adventure that's that's no, what does. it is like yeah absolutely yes feeling yes. Of adventure adventuring onwards <laughs> to another delay that just got a little more interesting because apparently Jeff Grubb has heard that this game could be delayed potentially into 2024. Suicide Squad has been delayed. It was originally supposed to come out in May, which had the most like quiet announcement of a release date I think I've ever seen in my life because myself and Noah were sitting watching the trailer at the Game Awards and Jeff Keighley was like, and it's coming in May. And I was like, w did we know already? And then I went and looked, and earlier that day, they randomly tweeted, it's coming out May 26th. <laughs> like, you couldn't even yeah. save the date for the show. Like, Jeff just had to casually mention it. And I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> did this have a date already? Yeah, like, we didn't see that. Like, what like the it, it, it was just, and that, we already were worried. That should have caused more worry. This definitely caused a lot of worry, just like the previous showcase was a worry. And the reason is because it was very poorly received. Because people saw Suicide Squad and they don't get why a bunch of people are jumping around with shooting, why a big shark is shooting a gun and a guy that's supposed to throw boomerangs is shooting a gun and Harley Quinn is shooting a gun. And uh, it all has a battle pass and live service and everything. Like this game definitely has come out like five, six years too late at this point. And you have to wonder if they only delay it to later this year. As Jason Schreier reported, for what it's worth, a delay like this is mainly for polish, not to overhaul core gameplay. But that core gameplay is what caused this <laughs> backlash. People aren't mad because, oh man, the pixels just look awful on that big shark. They're mad because mm -hmm. the core gameplay doesn't look right. I Maybe if it gets delayed to 2024... Maybe some things change. I do not see a Star Wars Battlefront style fixing of this. I do not think that that will fix what the real problem for this game is. And it's because it, Battlefield's prop Battlefront's problem wasn't the core gameplay for Battlefront 2. It was just that there was microtransactions that other people hated. Mm -hmm. So what what are you guys thinking in your head about this thing? What? The thing that kind of worries me, um, you know, reportedly delay reported, you know, reports, reports, reports. And from all the sites that I've seen, like I've seen people reaching out for comment to the studio. I haven't seen any response from them. I don't know if you guys have. Um, but with multiple people and everybody's, you know, reporting on this delay and there's no response, that's that worries me. So... Especially why does like that the worry negative. you? Why I because if they're delaying it like that, if, I mean, if I'm good. a studio and I and I have you know my game that already is you know fishy waters you know with re reception yeah, and response so the, far. I see the shark joke there? Yeah, um, it took like 0. 0.2 seconds to think of that one. Uh, like if I'm 
if I'm a dev, especially like PR marketing, like and everybody's reporting delay, delay, I, I want to tell people why, because if you go radio silent, that, you know, like me, <laughs> that sparks worry. And, you know, if you come out and say, hey, this is a polished delay, that's much better, even if it's just a polishing delay than just not saying anything at all. Um, just from my mindset. So that that's why I'm like, at least respond and say why you're delaying it. I, I don't like it when dev studios just say, hey, we're delaying it. Well, here's the thing. What? Well, I think this is what makes it worse for them. Rocksteady. They haven't actually said that they delayed it. And so if the rumor were false, if the report were false and they were to come out and say, yo, we're actually not delaying it. Oh, Twitter's just going to blow up. Yep. <laughs> the whole world yeah. is going to blow up and they're going to be like, you need to delay it. Like everybody's just going to be like, no, <laughs> delay it. And so it now is. it's like, oh, frick. Like uh, <laughs> now the PR is really bad. It needs delayed not. so badly that people are reporting it, <laughs> thinking that it's getting delayed. <laughs> Jason oh. Schreier, the king of delaying video games, is intentionally delaying one right. so that it gets fixed. purposely. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's do you active. do y'all remember the Kotaku back in the day? How he would report on a game and it get delayed the very next get day, and he'd be like, "I'm sorry, y'all." <laughs> no, now and Jason Schreier doing it intentionally. Like, I don't like. The way Suicide Squad like looks, let's report on a delay. <laughs> we got the in all fairness if, behind us. Yeah. In, in in all fairness, if Schreier says it, I believe it. Like oh, I, I do get sure. what you're yeah. saying though. Uh, yeah, if it no. was not, <laughs> at this point, you almost are like, well, I guess we're delaying this game. <laughs> Rock stays sitting there like, well, we got to delay it now. <laughs> yeah. Throw your hands yeah. in the air. is like, all right, who wants to design a new character? Because we got time. Yep. Dryer, <laughs> you know. Like. 2024, Jeff Grubb said? Nope. We're 2025, guys. <laughs> like, we're just, just going to push the thing way back. No, uh, yeah. I, I do believe the report. I just, I just think. Uh, so the look of it, it looks nothing, uh, you know. I'm not like this huge suicide squad person, but I'm familiar enough with the tone of it that it's like, okay, yeah, that's, this really isn't suicide squad. However, we'll say if the gameplay is fun, that will go a long way. I think that's what Rocksteady is trying to figure out what people have seen. Okay. The tone, the look, the feel, maybe not quite suicide squad. Can we shore up the gameplay in such a way that it's still going to be weird to see King Shark and Harley Quinn and all these people rocking guns? But if it's fun, how much of that will they excuse because the gameplay is so good? I yeah. think that's what the delay for them is trying to fix. So even with the battle pass and, and all that, if it's fun, that will a lot of people will forgive the game for what it does just because it's fun. It's the, it's, it really is the same thing with destiny. The story for Lightfall not great, but for a lot of people, it's still fun to play and they forgive Bungie for that. Yep. And you know, you know, like I will in, you know, two months from now, people aren't going to be talking about the Lightfall campaign anymore. That we're going to be talking about the currency there it's going to move on just because the game is still so much fun to play so yeah so i think that's where rock city which for them i think is really important because they have a great history of great gameplay so if, if they can knock that out of the park whatever that looks like i'll probably have fun with it i like the division i do like destiny yeah. i like borderlands this seems like a type of game that's right up my alley. I don't care about Battle Pass. If I don't want to go into it, I won't. I'll play your game. So mm -hmm. I, th I think for them, that that's what this is about. Yeah. Well, the, the biggest thing for them at this point is that they're back at square one with rebuilding their reputation. Like everybody looked at them and man, they were, you're one of the best developers out there. You took you made some of the best some of the best superhero games out there and I we are all still just at a loss at why the crap <laughs> did you not just make Arkham 4 <laughs> at this point that should have just happened 
they probably they probably think at this point that should have just happened <laughs> but instead they've been spending eight gonna come up on nine years on a game that they probably thought they would uh, i think actually schreier even said they thought they were coming out with this game around the time spider-man came out yep and now they're going to be coming out around the time spider-man 2 comes out (laughs) (laughs) so it's they are honest that it's reminding me a lot of where bioware is right now except for the fact bioware's already on the other side of their live service fiasco yeah. Like they're they're back to square one of we aren't sure if you are if you got this. Like you guys ri- they they are ri- they risked a lot on this. So that's that's part of the reason for the delay. They risked a lot and they've got to figure out how this game from 8 years ago fits into today's market. Like yep. cuz live service it, we we've all talked about it, it is risky and very hit or miss. At this point, if you've been making this game for eight, nine years, there's a lot of money that has been sunk into this studio and into this game. You don't want to go out with put the wrong foot out there and suddenly you're on the hook for all that money. <laughs> and I, I, one thing that is kind of interesting is I know that the studio heads were stepping away. Like, I'm very curious as to if they're still there through this delay or if they're still on track, like I'm, I'm honestly interested in that. If they're going to be gone or if they're going to be helping, I thought they, already did leave. I, I thought they were leaving after um, oh, okay. the game actually released. Okay. If, if I'm correct, I, I don't remember if I am or not. I'm checking actually really quick just so I can see uh, they're leaving at the end of 2022. So they actually are already gone. Yeah, so here's my thought on that. The the maybe they didn't foresee this this particular delay, but yeah. Here's the thing. You've been making this game for a long time. You probably in some form or fashion shoehorn a live service element into it because this is where monetization is well, now. And I'm sure WB was pushing it too at that point. Absolutely. So at this point the game you've been working on probably isn't quite, you know, what you were hoping it was going to be. And so you're doing all this stuff, shoehorning monetization, and you're doing it all with Suicide Squad. Not even Batman. A sigh. Like, if <laughs> they were doing Batman Arkham city plus i don't know you know like whatever Mar- well, we are Arkham we already city talked two. about the fact that gotham knights fits whatever this vision is better than uh, that's true suicide mm-hmm. squad <laughs> um but yeah so but even so, batman bigger name if they were trying this with batman probably a lot of people would still hate it just because you know battle pass and all that but it's still batman at least it's it's more of that Damn. arkham feel that y'all been like i I do feel like the brawl brawling system would need to be updated at this point a little bit. Yeah. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing all this with suicide squad. Eh. Not only sunk money. Who, if they, if they go down, like going down with suicide squad, is just <laughs> that suicidal. There you go. Like, Sheesh. You know, joke writes itself. Yeah. It's, it's just, it, you never like to see your heroes fall and <laughs> we are witness. We are, I'm witness. I've had to witness. Uh, I've mentioned Bioware. Bioware could do no wrong for me for so long and I had to Delayed watch it. that. And now with, uh, <laughs> now with Rocksteady, it's, it's really sad to see just their struggle. That's, that's really the way to put it. You, you don't go through, you don't develop a game for like eight years and it not be a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you feel you keep feel it all these team. developers honest. Yeah, <laughs> it is no joke. <laughs> just just do what Sony does and put out a single player game. It's safer. <laughs> right? It's uh, safer. Seriously, <laughs> do what you do. This is why I talk about identity. Do what you do. Yep. So Stop so many people upset with friends. PlayStation because they don't do certain things. Let it, they cooking over there with God of War and their eleven million sold copies. Yeah. 
I'm not like a huge fan of like The Last of Us and the way it, just the way Sony does their games. But I cannot deny they work and they're yep. still good. They're still attention grabbing. I still get some enjoyment out of it. But yeah, they stay in their bag and it works. Yep. And it about to work again on me with Spider-Man 2. Yep. <laughs> Keep it simple. Stay in your lane. That you Stay in your good lane. At. You be soft. Yep. Go back to your single player stuff. Stay in your lane. Do your thing. Yep. Stay in your lane. Yeah, that is it for all of the news. Oh, that was it? Oh man. That, that was, was it. Up. Yeah. We we that had some bigger more. we had some bigger rocks to talk about. So Yeah. And they're not so steady, are they? No. All right. No, so. they're not, sadly. <laughs> um all right well that'll do it then so hope you enjoyed it appreciate you watching appreciate you listening we will talk to you next week peace see ya